Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. We're in my kitchen today because I wanted to share what I eat in a day to stay slim and healthy, to fight menopausal belly fat, and to help with my heart health as I get older. I'm over 60 now, I'm post-menopause, and so everything gets harder and harder the older we get. It gets harder to maintain your muscle mass, it gets harder to maintain the shape that you had when you were younger. It gets harder to fight the menopausal belly fat. My main goal in life is to be the healthiest person that I can be to have really good heart health because I do have borderline high cholesterol, it's hereditary. And I'm also aware that the number one killer of women is heart disease. And so if I can avoid having an early heart attack or dying of heart disease, I would like to do that too. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, exercise expert. I'm just like a regular person who is trying to do the best I can in my everyday life to eat healthy, lower my risk of heart disease, stay physically fit so that I can do what I want. So all that greatly impacts what I eat in a day and how I work out. So just to put my little workout routine in a nutshell for you, I generally work out three to four times a week for between 20 minutes and an hour. And my workouts, I would consider to be vigorous exercise. So that goes along with the recommendations for heart health and for maintaining a healthy weight as you get older. My most recent video, uh, which I can link right up here for you guys, I went more into my exercise routine changes as I've gotten older, so you might wanna check that one out. So I've been making these what I eat in a day videos for about 10 years now, and I gotta say my diet has improved gradually over the 10 years. So when I first started doing my heart healthy diet 40 years ago now, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so long ago, um, I cut out the standard things that they were recommending then. Red meat, bacon, fried foods, french fries, potato chips, mayonnaise, and then over the years I've kind of tried to improve my diet by adding in more plant-based foods, by cooking vegan or vegetarian a couple nights a week. I've tried to add in more fish. So over the last couple of years I've tried to improve on what I'm doing now that I'm postmenopausal to make adjustments for how my body is changing. And so I'm trying to now increase my fiber, increase my protein, and decrease the sugars in my diet. A diet rich in fiber can promote better gastrointestinal health. It can reduce your risk for a stroke, heart attack, type two diabetes, and obesity. And increasing the fiber in your diet can help you to maintain a healthy weight. It can help you to feel fuller longer. It can help you to lower your cholesterol. It can help you to lower your blood sugar. And it can lower your risk of gastrointestinal cancers. The recommended amount of fiber for women over 50 per day is 21 to 25 grams of fiber. So I've tried to increase the fiber in my diet by making simple swaps away from white starches and adding in a lot more brown starches. So instead of white rice, I use brown rice. Instead of white bread, I use multi-grain bread or whole grain bread. I've swapped in whole grain cereals. Besides looking at your starches for places to increase fiber, you can also get fiber from vegetables. Avocados are a really great source of fiber, as is kale and other dark green leafy vegetables. This is the cereal that I eat. I've been eating this for a few years. This has seven grams of fiber in it. I also have raw pumpkin seeds, raw sunflower seeds, raw almonds, and that ups the fiber in my cereal even more. I don't eat a lot of bread anymore, but I have one piece of toast every day with my lunch just because I eat a salad and I need like a carb to help keep me fuller longer. So I have a slice of toast with some hummus on it. And I've swapped my bread out over the years. Now I'm having the Dave's Killer Bread. This has three grams of fiber. I also like the Ezekiel Bread. This isn't as tasty as the Dave's, but this has no sugar in it. The Dave's has two grams of sugar. So this contains three grams of fiber, so I get a little extra fiber in there. So here's just a list of a bunch of the different fiber foods that I eat and how much fiber they contain. A cup of brown rice has three and a half grams of fiber. Half of an avocado has seven grams of fiber. A cup of broccoli has 2.4 grams. An apple has 4.4 grams. A cup of romaine lettuce, one gram of fiber. A cup of blueberries has four grams of fiber. Like a quarter cup of walnuts has two grams of fiber. Pumpkin seeds 
have a gram and a half of fiber. And so I'm always adding like a gram or two of fiber, just slipping it in here or there by sprinkling walnuts or nuts or seeds over the top. So then the next thing that I'm trying to increase now that I'm older is my protein intake. And this one was news to me a couple of years ago. And so I've really tried to get this one going in my diet. It was kind of hard to do at first, but now I've achieved it. And now I'm good with the protein. The reason that we need to eat more protein as we age is because our bodies just process proteins less efficiently as we get older. And so it takes more protein to get the same nutritional benefit out of it. What increased protein can do for you is that it can reduce your appetite, it can increase your muscle mass, maintain your bone mass, help to reduce cravings, boost your metabolism, lower your blood pressure, and help maintain your weight loss. So all good reasons to add more protein into your diet. Women start losing muscle mass starting at about the age of 30. And so eating more protein can help you maintain your muscle mass. Doing weight bearing exercise is so important for helping you to maintain your muscle mass as well. The standard protein grams recommendation for women over 50 is about 45 grams of protein. But depending on how much you weigh and how active you are, that could be like half of what you actually need. So the recommendation is that you get one to 1.2 grams of protein for every kilogram of body weight. So for the average woman who weighs about 140 pounds, she would need between 63 and 75 grams of protein a day. The average person is getting about 30 grams of protein a day. So you might have to double your protein intake based on what you were getting. So for me, I'm about 120 pounds. The ideal amount for me is 55 to 65 grams of protein a day. So that's increasing my protein by 20 grams. But as it turns out, a lot of the swaps that I had already made in my diet added a lot more protein to my diet, so I was actually pretty good, but I did need to add a little bit more. It's also recommended that you spread out your protein intake throughout the day. They actually recommend that you get about 15 to 30 grams of protein at each meal. If you're trying to increase your protein and you're getting, say, 40 or 50 grams at one meal and then you know virtually none at your other meals, anything over 40, your body, it's too much to handle all at one time and it's not gonna be able to use it. The healthiest protein options are lean meats like chicken, turkey, and fish, and low fat dairy and plant sources like soy, nuts, seeds, beans, and lentils. An average portion size of chicken or turkey, four ounces, will have about 28 grams of protein. An average four ounce size serving of fish has about the same. Five ounces of Greek yogurt has 12 to 18 grams. A half cup of edamame has eight grams of protein. A half a cup of beans, eight grams of protein. The raw pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds that I eat, they have seven grams of protein per quarter cup. So I love sprinkling them on everything throughout the day so I get a quarter cup a day. Bam, there's seven grams of protein. A third of a cup of hummus has seven grams. Two tablespoons of peanut butter, seven grams. One egg, six grams of protein. And a third of a cup of quinoa has six grams of protein. So those are all really great sources of protein. So if you have an egg for breakfast along with maybe some toast with peanut butter or toast with hummus, then you'll be getting your fiber, your protein all together in a really healthy breakfast. For breakfast, I usually will eat that bowl of cereal. I also have a cup of tea and a glass of orange juice. So my breakfast contains eight grams of fiber and seven grams of protein. For lunch, my diet gives me 13 grams of fiber and 31 grams of protein. I usually have an apple or yogurt with blueberries for my afternoon snack, so that gives me four grams of fiber if it's the apple. It gives me a whole bunch of protein and fiber if I have the yogurt. For dinner, I'll usually end up with about three grams of fiber and 36 grams of protein. On to sugars next, the recommendation for women is to get no more than 50 grams of sugar in your diet. That's the standard recommendation for all women. The American Heart Association, though, recommends only 24 grams of sugar in your diet for heart health, and that is added sugars. So you wouldn't count the sugars that are naturally present in, say, an apple, but you would count sugars 
that on the label say added sugars or that you add to something like your tea. I usually track my micronutrients in the MyFitnessPal app and that really helped me to reduce the number of sugars that I was ingesting every day and I was surprised that I had so many. I think I was at like 75 to 100 grams of sugar a day. I managed to cut that down to 50 and now I'm really working on cutting it down further to get to 25. And one of the places that I noticed that I was ingesting a ton of extra sugar was in my oatmeal. This contains 17 grams of added sugar. You really have to read the labels carefully. Oats on their own have no sugar. It's 17 grams of added sugar. So that's 17 grams that they don't need to put in there. Now I've switched to the original unsweetened oat milk for all of my oat milks and these have zero sugars. So it does have one gram of fiber and one gram of protein so I've cut out like 17 grams of sugar just by switching my oat milk. One of the places that I get the most sugar in my diet is from my orange juice. I drink a very small cup of orange juice, not even a cup, a quarter cup in the morning just to swallow my pills and keep from getting that pill reflux. Sugar, sugar, sugars. 23 grams of sugar for an eight ounce serving. Of course, I'm only having a two ounce serving, so that cuts it down by a quarter, but still, that's still six grams of sugar in that tiny little cup of orange juice. All right, so now let me go into exactly what I eat in a day. There are recipes on my blog for a lot of what I eat in a day, and in my last couple of videos, I showed some of the things that I make, so you can always check that out. I will put the link to my blog to the recipes part in the info box below the video, and I'll link my other videos on the end screen of this video. I am a real creature of habit when it comes to food. I don't really like to think about breakfast too much. So for breakfast, I eat a bowl of cereal, but it's not the cereal straight from the box. I doctor it up by adding a bag of either almond or peanut butter granola. And almonds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. I make sure that the peanut butter granola only has five grams of sugar, so I pick that so it matches the sugars of the cereal. And then by adding in the raw nuts and seeds, that cuts down on the sugars a little bit by bulking up the cereal and adding extra fiber. Then I pretty much just drink water for the rest of the morning. I'll usually do my workout, take a shower, get ready, and then it'll be time for lunch. So for lunch, I eat the same thing every day. Pretty much, I eat a green salad that has some protein on it. My protein is from canned salmon. The salmon I get is always wild-caught salmon. I don't ever get farmed salmon. My salmon salad recipe is on my blog. I make it with apple cider vinegar, low-fat Greek yogurt, and I put a lot of uh, golden spices in it, you know, like curry and cumin and turmeric. And I also put some seaweed in there and some sesame seeds, sometimes some pickles. And then for my salad, I'll usually put in a mixture of kale and romaine lettuce. I'll always eat a half an avocado. And then I'll put in whatever vegetables or lentils or legumes I have around the house. And then I always do the sprinkle of walnuts pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds to get that extra bit of fiber and protein in there. With the salad, I'll have a side of toast, either the Dave's Killer Bread or the Ezekiel. I'll usually put a smear of hummus on my toast. This one has two grams of fiber, two grams of protein, and no sugars for two tablespoons. Sometimes for lunch, if I don't feel like making the salad, I'll have an avocado toast with a fried egg on top. I'll use my same bread that I showed you before, and then I'll just pan fry an egg in olive oil. I don't use butter for anything, and I'll mash half of an avocado on a piece of toast, put the fried egg on top, and that's lunch, and that is a really good lunch with high fiber and high protein. If I go out, I'll have a salad with salmon on top, generally. Then for my afternoon snack, I'll usually have an apple and a cup of decaf green tea. I'll sweeten that with just the tiniest little speck of honey just to take the edge off the tea. My dinner varies widely. Usually I'll eat salmon or chicken or ground turkey. Anything that you usually make with ground beef like chili or pasta sauce, I will make with ground turkey. And I have a lot of recipes for those things on my blog. My favorite salmon to make is just a pan seared salmon with cumin and curry and nutritional yeast on it. And then I'll usually just have a vegetable and a brown rice on the side. And that meal gives me three grams of fiber and 36 grams of protein. So I'm getting a lot of protein in 
at that meal. And so having those things for my standard meals add up to the right amount of fiber and the right amount of protein for my postmenopausal weight maintenance and heart health. All right, so that is what I eat in a day and how I work extra fiber, extra protein, and less sugars and less saturated fats into my diet on a daily basis. So I hope that if you're looking to do something similar to that, that this has helped you and that, um, you know, if you're looking for recipes that you will check out my blog posts and my recipes over there. And don't forget to get in your exercise about 20 minutes every day of moderate exercise or 30 minutes, three times a week of vigorous exercise. And that will all help you so much, whether you're on a weight loss goal, a heart health goal, or just a healthy aging in general goal. Combining the diet with the exercise will really help you so much. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.